I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. I hope you and your families are well. Uh, I've been missing for the last six days because we had the cyclone uproot a lot of trees and fall on our electric poles and wires. So we didn't have electricity and we didn't have Wi-Fi for the last six days. And I have to tell you, it was one of the most beautiful experiences, a complete electronic detox from screens, from WhatsApp, from coaching, from everything. It's a feeling I cannot describe, but I'll do a whole separate video on that. A lot of you have been reaching out on my welfare and I am fine and my family is fine as well. Thank you for all of your prayers and blessings. Uh, I used this time over the last six days to go over all of my client notes, all of our you know, patients who suffer from diseases over the last eight years and pull out commonalities. What are commonalities that I see in patients who are suffering from diseases? What are commonalities that I see in people who are recovering? Same disease, same medication, but two different outcomes. Some patients recover quickly, some don't, although they're getting the same kind of medication for the same symptoms. This has always intrigued me. Like why? Why? If you put 100 people with the same symptoms in a room and you give them the same medication, you have almost 100 different outcomes. Okay, you can treat the symptom uniformly, but recovery, it's different for everyone. Why does this happen? Some people consume good food, some people exercise, some people sleep well, some people meditate and chant, some people take medication. Different results for everyone. The commonality that I pulled out in all of our cases over the years is stress and anxiety. No matter what, stress and anxiety today is medically and scientifically documented to be the cause of several diseases and the reason why people don't even recover. You can go on changing medication after medication. You can go on all the fat diets. You can eat all the superfoods in the world, join all the gyms, you know, witness different trainers and nutritionists. But finally, if you are unable to relax, if you are unable to reduce your chronic stress, nothing can work. And I'll tell you why. It is a lie that there are foods out there that can reduce your stress levels. They can make you feel better because some of them boost serotonin that makes you feel better, but it can never take away your stress. Nothing can take away your stress because stress is not something that you can just lift out of your heart or out of your mind and throw it out of the window. Like I constantly say in all of our videos, stress is the way that you relate to a person, a thing or an event. It's the way you relate to something. Everyone has stress in their life. If I put 100 people in a room right now and present you all with five stressors, all of you all will react differently. All of you all will not be stressed. Some of you all will see it as challenge. Some of you all will feel fearful. Some of you all will feel anxious. Some of you all will just not give a damn because it's the way that you all are relating to the five different stressors that I present to you. We need to understand this because you cannot live a life trying to reduce your stress or eat yourself out of stress. You need to understand that you need to put your energy in changing the way you relate to a person, a thing or an event. There are so many people out there who are stuck in toxic relationships and they realize that if they cannot get out of the relationship either because of money issues or because they have a child, then they need to change the way they relate to that particular partner or that person in their relationship. Otherwise, that toxic relationship is gonna consume them health-wise, mentally, emotionally. So if you cannot accept or you cannot let go, then at the most, you gotta change the way you relate to something. Okay, I'm in a situation right now, I can't get rid of this person. Maybe I need to change the way I relate to this person. I understand this person has five or six bad qualities. If I put those five and six bad qualities aside, Am I able to relate to this person better? So our stress and the way we handle our stress is only the way we change, the way we relate to it. And that's how we get better. You can fool yourself with foods and exercises. Of course, you'll do an exercise for one hour. You'll do yoga for an hour. You'll meditate for one hour and you'll feel great for two hours. After that, if you still cannot change the way you relate to something, your stress is back there in your life. So I wanted to talk today about entanglement. This is something all of us need to be mindful about, how we constantly get entangled in other problems. Okay, they may not be our own problems. You may hear something about someone and you get entangled in it, which means you get pulled into it. Have you ever, have you, let, let me give you an example of your shoelaces when you were a kid or sometimes it happens now. It ties up into a knot and if you're in a hurry, the knot gets tougher and tougher to get out of. But if you patiently, mindfully sit down and 
you remove that knot, it becomes way easier. That's called entanglement. Okay, you get entangled in the news. The news has just stated something negative. But now you take that, you add it with all the news on WhatsApp and everywhere else and the gossip and you get entangled into it. A small problem becomes such a big problem in your mind. Whereas the basic fact was X amount of people died because of X amount of reasons. There's a fact over there. But now you're so entangled into it, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. So we get entangled in our fears and in anxiety and our anxiety is making it so much more difficult. And that chronic stress is the root cause of almost so many diseases. When I talk to my friends who are surgeons in hospitals across the world, they say, look, people, they, they may need surgery, but they need to understand that they can't go on doing surgery. They have to change their lifestyle. They got to reduce your stress. Every top cardiologist out there knows that stress plays a major role in your hypertension, in your bypasses, your cardiovascular diseases, whatever it is, there is a connection of stress. So when are we gonna start addressing this problem? And the only way you can do is by learning to relax. A lot of people say, look, I do yoga and I, med I do meditation and I chant for an hour. But it's not about that one hour. How do you let the learnings of that meditation, the learnings of that silence, the learnings of that pranayama slip into your day? If I'm in a stressful situation right now, I finish my yoga and meditation at six in the morning, but right now I'm hit with a problem. How do I replicate what I did in my yoga or my pranayama? I'm in a room with a lot of stress. I still have in control my breath. I can slow down my inhale. I can slow down my exhale. And that chronic stress is not going to create inflammation in my body. It's not going to create a hormonal imbalance when I'm out of control. When my inhales and my exhales are short, my breathing becomes shorter and shorter, which is fight and flight, stress mode. How can I do this? Because a lot of people say, but look at a stressful situation, I won't remember. But that's because we're not mindful. The key word is mindfulness. And the sooner we can all learn to cultivate mindfulness in our lives, that's when our lives are gonna change. That's when we're gonna stop chasing fad diets and fad exercise programs and fad spirituality. When we are mindful, when we're living consciously, we're living with awareness. I have a meal in front of me. Mindfully, I know, okay, this part of my meal can cause health problems. This part of my meal is loaded with vitamins and minerals. Let me slow down and eat. When I cultivate mindfulness, everything gets better. I can be in the most stressful meeting and I can lose control because I'm not mindful or I'm mindful. I can take two steps back, decide my response, decide my reaction. Okay, I don't become a doormat. I just become more powerful because I've taken time to come up with the most assertive response, mindfully. mindfully mindfulness doesn't make you soft. It doesn't make you a doormat. It makes you more powerful than an angry person in most cases. In many instances in my life where I've used anger as a tool to retaliate, it's never served me any good. Maybe the ego and pride is good for about 15 minutes, but never. But sometimes when you step back, you sit in silence and you mindfully come back with a very powerful decision that has so much of power than anger and negative emotions. How do we cultivate mindfulness? Because we need mindfulness to get out of entanglement. When we find ourselves getting entangled or we find all the negativity increasing in our mind, we've got to step back mindful. What am I thinking? Why am I thinking so many negative thoughts? What action can I take right now? How do I move to action right now? Because if I stay stuck in fear, if I stay stuck in anxiety, it's only gonna consume me. The easiest way to break out of anxiety and fear is to take action. Okay, there's a problem right now in my organization. What can I do? Oh, there's a problem in my organization. Oh no, what's gonna happen? What are people gonna think of me? What's gonna happen? Am I gonna lose money? Am I gonna lose business? Entanglement in your fear. But no, there's a problem. What action can I take? Okay, someone's got COVID in my family. What action can I take? Thinking about death right at the start is not gonna help you with any problem because that's not within your control. Mindfulness teaches us to focus on what is within our control. Within our control right now, I can stabilize the patient, I can decide where to take the patient, I can check their vitals, maybe call up a doctor, figure out what's best to do. But if I'm in anxiety and fear and entangled, I can't think clearly. No one can think clearly but you can react emotionally, emotionally in the most unstable way when you are consumed with anxiety and fear. So to get out of entanglement, I practice and I cultivate mindfulness that, okay, now I'm filling up with negativity. What's going on? I'm thinking too many negative thoughts, too many people, too many messages, too much news. 
disconnect, unplug, because it is only in silence that you can see clearly. And in that clarity, you will get an answer and you will get a decision that you can make and some action that you can take. Asking 10 more people or seeking more validation and opinions from other people is only gonna get you more confusion. That's why validation is the worst thing that any human being can do to feel better. You feel worse. How do we cultivate mindfulness in the most easiest way? Start off with five minutes of meditation a day. Start off with two minutes where you just mindfully focus on your inhale and your exhale. As simple as that. You get distracted, that's okay. Don't beat yourself up. Come back to the inhale and exhale and come back again to the inhale and exhale. You may do it 10 times. You may be, do it 20 times. Tomorrow, it may be 15 times. Day after, it may be just five times. That's how you get better. Practice, practice, practice. You can't expect to sit down to start meditating today and get enlightened today. It doesn't work that way. You've been spoiled for quick fixes. You've been spoiled for instant gratification. All that I can say you should be aware of because it's not solved anything in your life at all. So mindfulness, I can go back to my morning coffee and mindfully think about it. How did it taste? How did I feel when I was sipping on my coffee? I can go back and mindfully reflect on how did I feel when I woke up this morning? By constantly going back and reflecting on little moments in our day, it helps us to cultivate mindfulness. Okay, there are other ways. I can eat mindfully. Today, my meal, I can slow down, chew, taste my food mindfully. That's helping me cultivate my mindfulness. Okay, if I'm holding something, maybe a flower or, an, or a hug, I'm getting a hug, mindfully dissolve in that hug. What kind of feelings are you getting when you're embraced in a hug? What kind of feelings are you getting when you are embraced in touch or a handshake or whatever it is? Spend some time in nature. That's a beautiful way to cultivate mindfulness because when you're in nature, you automatically slow down. Another way to cultivate mindfulness is get rid of the things that are keeping you entangled. Okay, I'm not saying you can live a life without your phones and social media, but learn self-restraint. When you find yourself mindlessly reaching out for the phone, at that point, don't do it. Don't do it because your subconscious mind works with a circuit. It knows that you are gonna pick up the phone. To break that circuit or to break that bad habit, don't touch the phone for 10 minutes. You'll create a new neural circuit in your subconscious mind. So self-restraint is important. Look at your phone 10 minutes later, but don't do it when you want to do it. This is how we cultivate mindfulness, okay? You should know how your workout felt. How did you feel after your workout? How did you feel after your yoga? How did you feel after your pranayama? But everyone has a to-do list and they say, hey Luke, I'm sick, but I did one hour of yoga, I did one hour of chanting, I pray to my God, I do all of this stuff. I say, what did you learn from that? What do you feel from that? Do you feel your prayers are being answered? Do you say your prayers with faith and belief? No, we just rattle it off because we think it's a to-do list and it doesn't work for us. So I believe the future of our world, it's always been, it's not my invention. The future of our world, the future of healthcare, the future of preventive health, the future of your emotional health is learning to cultivate mindfulness because you cannot take away problems from your life, but you can have the mindfulness to address those problems in a more structured way. You cannot, you can attend all the stress management workshops in the world, but you'll feel good for one day, two days, five days. Unless you learn how to change the way you relate to what is happening in your life, you cannot get rid of stress. And to change that relationship, it's a difficult thing. You need mindfulness, conscious living, living with awareness, all fancy terms, but I'll keep it simple. Mindfulness, mindfully go through your day. It requires you to slow down. It requires you, if you were feeling happy, go back to that moment of happiness. What made you feel happy? How were you feeling in your body? How ecstatic were you? If you were sad, go back to that moment. How, what were you in that moment? What triggered that moment? But we mindlessly go through the day. We say, oh, let's have a, uh, like, like, let's drown our sorrows in alcohol or smoke them away or shop them away. Do that, but you're never gonna get better. You're never gonna learn to cultivate mindfulness. After a while, the alcohol isn't gonna be enough, nor are the drugs, nor is the shopping. The human mind will search more and more because you've not addressed the root cause of the problem. So learn to cultivate mindfulness, even with your children. If you have to give them iPad time or phone time, that's okay. But don't give it to them out of control because that is what is gonna rob them out of mindfulness. And then you expect them to change, it's not possible. You find it difficult as an adult to change yourself. Don't expect your kids to change unless they learn to cultivate mindfulness. Sometimes just sitting and doing nothing is also mindfulness. These are all the things that you can do. Focus on one thing at a time. Whoever, whoever glorified multitasking, 
Okay, there's nothing glorified about it. In fact, your bosses may want you to multitask so that you get more work done in less time. But finally, you're gonna burn out and that work is never gonna be productive. Take one thing at a time, deep work, give it all your attention, finish it, move on to the next thing. This is mindfulness as well. Learn to cultivate mindfulness so that you do not get entangled in the world's problems, in other people's problems, in gossip, in backstabbing, in hatred, in negative emotions, because that's how we get entangled in it and we get sucked into it. And the more we feel that, the more we become that. Do you know that you can be addicted to sadness? Do you know that you can be addicted to your own depression? You can also be addicted to happiness and everything else. You gotta be mindful to know the difference and mindful to decide where you put your energy and where you put your attention on what actions in life and what thoughts you have. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you. I can promise you the best feeling in the world is learning to live mindfully. And it's not easy. It's difficult. Today you'll be mindful. Tomorrow you'll be thrown all over the place as life throws you different problems. But that's okay. Pick yourself back up again and practice. Practice, practice makes you perfect. And the more mindful you get, the more you realize how superficial your life is. The more you get more independent and you're not dependent on other people's opinions, you're not dependent on superficial things, it's a beautiful feeling. You've got to practice it and realize it to understand the value and the importance of it. Have a great day, everyone.